Good evening and welcome to Freedom is a Constant Struggle with our host Kilu Nyasha and engineered by Najada Handukic. We will interview activists involved with issues such as the war, poverty, the prison system, political prisoners, the healthcare system, as well as many other issues and how they affect you. This is a live show and we would love to hear any questions or comments you have, so please feel free to call in at 621-4473. And now, here's Kilu. <laughs> Thank you, Najada. And I'm really delighted to have as our guest tonight, uh, Katrina survivors, displaced Katrina survivors. <clears throat> Fine time to lose my voice. <clears throat> Raymond Rock III and his lovely wife, C.C. Campbell Rock. They're college-educated activists and servants of the people, I'm delighted to say. Prior to Katrina, Rock, who's a carpenter, and C.C., who's a journalist, built an educational justice movement in Louisiana titled Parents for Educational Justice, challenging the state's testing program. They also produced and co-hosted Speak Now or Forever Hold Your Peace, a live TV program, TV program for four years. Since their arrival in the Bay Area, the couple has advocated for the Gulf area um, justice and the right for Gulf area justice, Gulf Coast justice, get it right, Kilo, and the right to return, participated in a theater production about Katrina survivors' experiences, and Rock has written Katrina in the Hood. Parents of two teens and two adults, they're in the midst of rebuilding their home in New Orleans. Um, thank you so very much. Uh, Rock may, is what everybody calls That's you. That's what right? everyone calls me, yes. And Cece. Uh, thank you. I'm and thank you so much. You. Yes, we are really honored <laughs> to be here. Exactly. Yes. To, to know that people still understand, some of us get it, what actually happened and what is continuing to happen. The, you know, the displacement, the gentrification, the genocide that has occurred in the wake of Katrina in New Orleans, and it parallels what's going on here in Bayview Hunters Point, for example. Oh, yes. You know, the gentrification, yes. the pushing urban out removal. of people. Exactly. Urban <laughs> removal. Exactly. Pushing out of people. Mm -hmm. And so if you really want to see what that looks like, you can look at New Orleans and see it's happened uh, to at least 1.7 million of us. Right. Well, let's backpedal a little bit for those who, uh, who might have amnesia or, <laughs> or just, you know, don't have a good memory. Um, Hurricane uh, Katrina uh, came down on New Orleans as a Category 3 and was really anticipated to be a Category 5. Uh, on, in, uh, what was it, uh, August? August 29th, 2005. 2005. Right. Day I'll never forget. <laughs> I know. Yes. Describe what that day was like. Well, um, my wife and I had been debating whether we should stay or, or, or leave, and... Uh, Thank God they, my wife had enough uh, understanding that she had to get out with the kids, which she did a couple of days before I decided to stay. And uh, I was in it, you know. I saw the, the water rise, you know. I had to swim off the house and went through the whole thing, you know. For, I, was, I was in New Orleans for about 12 days, and I witnessed tremendous suffering, tr tremendous debt and devastation. I mean, the smells, the sounds, I mean, it's just, we, you know, I can't convey to nightmare. you. Yeah, it was a nightmare, a living nightmare. And I still have issues with it today, I, you know. Um, it's very difficult for me to even talk about it, you know. I can but, imagine. I'm, I imagine you must be suffering a little bit of, from PTSD behind something like that. Exactly. And, I mean, we have not received any type of, you know, mental aid or, any, you know, let alone of financial aid you know so we've kind of done everything on our own we've we received some aid we was able to pay off our uh, mortgage for the house and and i'm currently you know rebuilding the home about we're about 85 percent completed you know now i understand the fed the feds uh gave uh uh, Catherine, is it, or Kathleen? Kathleen Blanco, Kathleen Blanco, Blanco governor, the ex governor, governor, yes. Uh, the ex governor, who was governor at the time, uh, $10 billion to, uh, <laughs> to for reconstruction and for to help families in need. What happened? Well, maybe my wife could speak on that a little bit. 
Because <laughs> well, we, I don't know what happened to it. It's gone. Let me tell you what happened to it. Okay. It's gone. Okay. No, but no, it is gone. But yeah, here's who what... benefited from it? I guess <laughs> okay, I'll let point. me break it down to you. Okay. It was supposed to be for the families and the infrastructure of the city of hardest hit, which was New Orleans. Right. But instead, Kathleen Babineau Blanco, a Cajun who was from northern Louisiana, and northern Louisianians hate New Orleanians, um, a Democrat no less, but, you know, those Cajun roots and that, that, you know, she really should have been a Republican, actually. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people well, mas Mumia, Mumia masquerading. Well, Mumia Republicans. There's yeah. not much difference. Yeah, between them. right. There you go. In a closet. So, so what she decided yeah. to do, instead of taking care of families first mm -hmm. and rebuilding the homes of those who had lost their homes and giving proper grants, with the grant ceiling was 150000 Right. Instead of doing that, she decided, I'm going to do a three-way, a three-fer. First, you know, we'll give some money to some of them homeowners, but I'm most interested in giving money to small businesses to come back and to, to larger businesses to come back. So she subdivided the money into three different pots. And of course, by the time she finished helping companies to come back, there's very little left. As a matter of fact, they had started giving out the, the grants and in three months time, they had run out of money. Now yep. this was community development block grant money, which by law, 50% should have gone to low and modern income homeowners and survivors. And renters. And rent. Oh, the renters didn't have, no, no, no. They got nothing. They got nothing. They were not even in the plan for Kathleen Babineau Blanco. Renters got absolutely nothing. I think they've got between the people who rented and the people who lived in public housing, they got the short end of the stick all the way around the board. As a matter of fact, I think the mentality was, don't even bother to come back. We really don't want you. And not only did they not receive any uh, subsidies, uh, many of them had good, you know, nice, good furniture, you know, and and they were not allowed to go back and reclaim their goods, their their personal items, uh, and and like my wife was saying, a lot of that money went to people in away from the, where the where they had minor, say for example, a church might have lost a couple of shingles off the roof. They got a new roof, which may have cost ten, twelve thousand dollars, or fifteen, twenty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Whereas the people in New Orleans who actually lost their homes received very little. Mm -hmm. And then the other mm -hmm. group that was in the pot were people who owned rental property. Mm -hmm. So grants were going to them to restore the property. Uh, under the you could understand the, the mentality behind that. The theory behind that is if we give you money to rebuild your rental property, then you will rent it out to people and people can come home. But my point is, you know, that's not my issue if you own rental property. 